the Bridgeport mill came with this Bridgeport branded 6F-B power feed. It's in need of a little bit of service. There's a spiral gear inside the handle assembly that has a bunch of broken teeth on it and needs to be replaced. After taking off the cover for the electronics, I want to disconnect this box from the handle assembly. There's a couple of socketed cap screws that have to come out. I need to get a better view of what's going on underneath this control board, so I'll go ahead and take it out. There's another board attached to the underside here that has some micro switches that control the direction of the um, motor so that has to come out next and i'll set this uh, aside it's still connected for the time being and then i can remove these four screws to actually disconnect the motor from the handle assembly and once i um, get that off of there i'm going to set the motor and the control circuit and all that stuff aside i'll deal with that off camera there's there's no major issues there and I don't have any reference on how to take this thing completely apart I do have an exploded parts diagram but I'm going to be guessing on a few things of what needs to happen first and and second right now I'm just going to take this handle off uh, and get it out of the way and make sure I don't lose that little key This uh, set screw is just the oil fill cap. Um, just Since I'm going to tear this whole thing down anyway, I figured I'd take it out now. I'll get this uh, front cover off. I did notice that there wasn't a gasket behind this cover like there should be. Um, and make sure I don't lose the detent spring. Um, that RTV should not be there. Never seems to fail. I always seem to have trouble with taper pins. I don't know why I can never seem to figure out which side I'm supposed to uh, hit on. But I tried both of these repeatedly um, and it wasn't budging. Uh, I think it just needed to be a little bit more secured. Um, I do measure to make sure I am hitting on the small end because you want to hit the small end out to the large end. I think the what did it was really just setting it in a vise and making sure that it was held down tight. Once I did that, um, it uh, it was it came out without a whole lot of difficulty. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps with the YouTube analytics. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and. Hit that bell icon so you know when I put this thing back together. And with that taper pin out, I can now go ahead and sneak off this uh, shaft coupler that couples the output of the power feed to the feed screw. The next thing that seemed to make sense was this bearing cap on the uh, handle side of the power feed. This spring uh, holds on to the clutch arm. It helps with the detent. Um, it was uh, slightly broken, so it's going to end up being replaced. Now I can go ahead and remove the clutch arm assembly that's bolted into the top of the casing. It has to come out before any of the in insides can come out. There's a cam that's held on to this shaft with a roll pin, so I need to punch that out. Uh, once this is free to move, I can then remove this whole shaft. Now with that cam free to slide, um, I need to go ahead and get this whole shaft out of the um, handle casting itself. Um, it's a bit of a tight fit, so a little persuasion is necessary.
now to try to figure out how to get all these innards out. Um, a bit of a challenge. There's a couple of bearings on each side. This doesn't come out either way as a whole. So I'm just kind of trying to figure out here what the best order of operations is going to be. So it looks like I can remove this half of the handle assembly using a simple gear puller. It looks like it's just a press fit onto the shaft. And sure enough, the dial holder, there's a seal here and a bearing all comes out as one piece. <coughs> and behind this assembly is the drive clutch um, spring as well as the driven side of the drive clutch. I have to remove this snap ring off of the drive clutch um, so that I can at least make room for the drive clutch and then there's the hub with the spiroid gear on it that all needs to be able to slide on the shaft and I don't mind saying I really do hate snap rings. They are a pain in the neck and I can never seem to find a pair of snap ring pliers that seem to either fit or would hold together under you know reasonable pressure. I have a kit with an assortment of snap rings, so I'm probably just gonna be happy with destroying this one and I'll replace it later. Near as I can tell, the only way to get this shaft out is to send it down as you're looking at this through a bearing that's um, held in place on the other side of this casting. I have to remove the shaft first because the spiroid gear and the hub won't fit out of either of these two end holes. So this key has to come out and I tried heat. I even tried some penetrating oil and this thing fought me and fought me and fought me. Tried hitting it with a punch that didn't work. Um, and then I wanted to see if maybe I could get an edge with uh, a, a wood chisel. So I started attacking it with the wood chisel. Again, this really had no effect on moving this key anywhere. So as a last resort, I figured I'll take the Dremel with a cutoff wheel, see if I can put a slit down the center of the key and see if that might, you know, um, relieve some of the side pressure that the key is having in the slot in the shaft. Hoping that all of that um, had some effect, I went back at the key with just a standard punch. Um, and sure enough, I started getting a little bit of movement in the key. Went back and forth between trying to pull it out and 
uh, whacking it with the punch. And eventually I got enough of it to come out that I was able to tap the shaft with the um, brass hammer and it came right out. After removing the other snap ring that's next to this end bearing, I can drive the shaft out through the uh, gear hub, freeing it so I can take it out through the back of the casting. Now I can go ahead and use a socket to knock out the driving clutch out of the hub. And then after removing uh, three screws, I can tap this uh, hub off of this uh, drive gear. And now we have the old gear on the bottom, the replacement on the top. Uh, we'll be ready to go back in, which didn't turn out to be as easy as I'd hoped. Thank you. 